right, today we're taking a cool brew from legacy content creator Bosch and Roll, um, which is a cool mashup of the green white enchantress and blue white control decks. Um, and I guess also a little bit of uh, Bant up the beanstalk control. So what this deck's trying to do is basically look at where these two archetypes intersect. Obviously up the beanstalk is an enchantment, so it kind of uh, pairs well with Sithis Harvest's Hand and all these other enchantress cards that help you draw more cards. Um, but also when you're playing up the beanstalk, you're typically in Timeless at the very least, always going to be running Leyline Binding, which is a really good way to make sure that you... Um, can remove your opponent's creatures and it just so happens that that happens to be an enchantment as well um, and so that will be triggered by Sithis as well so that's pretty cool uh, not only do you have um, four up the beanstalks you also have four Sithises so it's kind of like you get eight effects that profit from your leyline binding so that's pretty cool one other thing that he was doing in that deck tech um, was trying to find a reason to play shark typhoon which is a really really cool card um, I also really like this card. Back in the days of blue-white control on Arena um, in Historic, we used to play this as a finisher when it was printed in the original Ikoria. Um, so had a lot of fun there. And what we're doing today is slightly adapting the value engine that he played in his video uh, into something that we can play in Timeless. So what are some things that are good with the uh, Enchantress strategy in Timeless? Well, a lot of people are running the Solemnity 9 Lives combo. They'll do some variations of it. Sometimes they'll play the uh, Phyrexian Unlife instead of um, 9 Lives, or, you know, it'll be something different. But usually we're just running some sort of Solemnity combo. Uh, this serves to lock out the board, at which point we'll just play a slow control game until we can eventually kill our opponents. Um... So in terms of the Enchantress strategy, that's more or less what we're trying to do. Um, we still have the same package of Sithis for draw, Utopia Sprawl, and Sanctum Weaver for ramp, uh, and things like that. Now on the other side of things, we can run the uh, Bant Control build, which is typically running up the Beanstalk, and because up the Beanstalk triggers on CMC 5 or greater, it's kind of uh, tough to get a deck set up in order to profit off of that. So for us, um, we are... And obviously the things that are going to be in the Enchantress build are pretty cheap. So uh, we have to both split the uh, mana requirements into the high stuff that's supposed to trigger up the Beanstalk and the lower uh, Enchantress sub-theme that is supposed to kind of grind us through the early game. So these cards that we're going to play, um, for once, don't involve Lorien Revealed. You could play it if you want, but I just kind of wanted to play some more of this... Uh, prison strategy so uh, I ended up cutting the Lorien revealed after a couple of games um, but obviously like we mentioned Leyline Binding is one of the targets Shark Typhoon if we hard cast it is another target uh, but if we're at the point where we're casting a Shark Typhoon we are usually pretty well off in terms of the game uh, Dig Through Time is another good one this was kind of the main addition that uh, I wanted to cover in this build of the deck because you can delve so heavily um, you can basically make this a pretty cheap spell mana wise and uh, it'll still trigger up the Beanstalk, uh, which is going to be really good for us. And of course, because up the Beanstalk is not a legendary like Sithis is, uh, we have the potential to get all, uh, more than one card on each one of these uh, spells that we cast. Um, I kind of felt like with the amount of card draw that we have since we're doing up the Beanstalk and Sithis, that Lorien Revealed didn't really make sense, because if we're going to be drawing at least like three to six cards uh, off of one spell, it's like uh, a little bit excessive in my mind, given that we're going to have, uh, you know, been drawing the entire game. So I kind of wanted to make sure it was spread out over uh, all the turns. I don't want us to start out with a total drought of cards and then end up just overdrawing to the point where we're discarding every turn. I wanted to make sure that it was just like, uh, you know, we draw some cards in the early game, some cards in the late game, but it's really not an overwhelming amount. Uh, and then some of the other things that we're running, uh, to Fairy as an endgame threat, we have Oko as an endgame threat, and then we have Uro as another endgame threat. So once we get our lock-in, uh, these are some ways that we can finish the game. Uh, another interesting one is Virtue of Knowledge here. For 5 mana, we can basically uh, copy a triggered ability, whether that be paying 2 mana to draw another card off of any one of our draw triggers. Um, double Amp the Uro trigger is also pretty nice, get 3 life as well alongside that. Um... Teferi's plus, draw some more cards. Teferi minus, remove some threats. All these are pretty solid. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also double the Leyline Binding, which is nice. Can double Shark Typhoon stuff. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cool things to copy with Virtue of Knowledge. And then plus, if you uh, play this for the 5-minute spell, not only do you uh, 
not only do you trigger up the Beanstalk and Sithis, you also can uh, basically start to double those Leyline Bindings uh, and things of that nature. Uh, it's mostly just Leyline Binding. Um, and then the other cool thing uh, that we can do is Gauntlets of Light, which if you haven't seen this before, um, if you have a good board state with enough enchantments, um, playing a Sanctum Weaver and getting Gauntlets of Light on it generates infinite mana, which for us should be enough to win the game. We have a lot of things that can cycle. Uh, obviously, Shark Typhoon, Dig Through Time draws us some cards. Uh, Teferi is card advantage, Uro's card advantage, and obviously any of the uh, things that we have uh, at the lower end can amplify that card advantage. So once we have infinite mana, it should be possible to get to a board state where we have multiple Shark Typhoons, remove all of our opponent's stuff, and then have a pass the turn uh, win strategy going on. So that's going to be the deck tech here. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, hoping that we can draw a lot of cards here um, over the course of the games today. And uh, before we hop into round one, make sure to like and comment. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to subscribe if you're new for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, sit back and enjoy. Uh, we'll have round one coming right up. Oh, also make sure that uh, you take note of some of these uh, fetchables. Get our black and uh, red for Leyland Binding. All right, here comes round one. Okay, it's first round. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, double Sithis is not necessarily bad. Leyland Binding is a good start. We can get, uh, I believe, uh, Mardu Trium uh, in order to uh, finish things out here. I am interested in keeping this hand. All right. Boom, boom. Um, here we go. Survive Trium. All right. That is four out of five for Leyland Binding. <clears throat> Opponent also on some ramping. Very interesting. Uh, here we can get a Sithis out for pretty much uh, no resistance. Court Tracker. So we are untapping a land. I wonder if this is going to be Lotus Field. Interesting. Uh, it's either that or just twiddling their stomping ground to make a bunch of mana. We will see. Um, well, we will provide the ability to do a shark typhoon thing here we can also cycle the zeotaurus proving ground which does seem like a decent uh, option as well they're deciding if they want to block here they might be able to tie over a stand make that thing bigger seems like not though we pass uh opponents deciding to harmonize uh, i suppose we'll also draw a card here <coughs> let's cycle that triome we are good on colors for now. Now what happens? So we're going to untap this land, make two more mana, and for what? Another Utopia Sprawl. Okay, so they are definitely just trying to ramp in here. Um, would love to be able to destroy land. Unfortunately, that's not possible. Now, with this, we can get a nine lives out, which is good. I don't think our board is necessarily in danger right now. <clears throat> um, we could probably just play this tapped here, go in again. Reserve Shark Typhoon if we really, really need to have it happen. Uh, otherwise, we can Leyland Binding draw a card. More or less, we're just waiting for opponent to do something here. There's three mana. Uh, they'll have six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Truly is twiddle. Tooth and nail. I see what we're doing. All right, sure. We'll stop them before combat in case they are a Xenagos combo with World Spine Worm. Uh, it's going to be Primeval Titan and Galta. Uh-oh. Well, this might be bad. Uh, if we can survive this, we're for sure dropping a 9 lives. Okay, so it will be Xenagos. Um, eh, it's awkward that Galta already gets the trigger. Alright, fine. And this just targets one creature, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay, so they deal some damage. I don't believe they have haste, right? No haste. Okay, so this is fine. Maybe. We'll go for Leyline Binding, I think. What does Inferno Titan do? Uh, this is just three damage. Emrakul didn't get cast, so it's whatever. Galta, sure. Uh, 
So we want to avoid them getting haste, so we have to Leyline Binding him now. We'll gain our life draw card. We get a Utopia Sprawl here. And we will exile Xenagos. Um, this is all fine. They can give something haste here if they have hand more battlements in this deck and a red mana source that they can come in untapped. They do not have it. Um, we'll just go ahead and do our cycling here for X equals zero. And uh, we are really just digging for that one card that we need. Um, all right. Well, no attacks come down here, thankfully. Uh, and we actually do find Idyllic Tutor, so we are close to making this thing work. Here's nine lives. Here is Utopia Sprawl. Let's target the basic, I guess. We will make another green, and then we can Flooded Strand, find something useful here. And we actually do have almost enough to make things work. We do need to find white mana source, so we'll get Sparrow's Headquarters. And this is white, white... White. We have three white mana, so as long as we, um, you know, tap this correctly, we should be able to idyllic tutor into uh, Solemnity. Line of War Tribe, sure. We're going to get us down to uh, five out of nine lives. Six out of nine lives with Inferno Titan. <coughs> All right. We pass. All right, so that's nine lives at six out of nine counters. We have to move to our turn here. It's going to be Idyllic Tutor, making sure that we have white mana available still. And we'll go for Solemnity here. I'm hoping that this will be uh, lethal. You're going to make Inferno Titan a little bigger. Sure, they can make it a lot bigger if they wanted to. Uh, we're going to grab Solemnity, and we will play Solemnity. Okay. Cool. So uh, now we can't die until they remove one of our enchantments. Let's see how long that takes for them. We're about to not really care about their board. Nissa. Aha! <laughs> Alright, so we are dead. They had exactly the removal piece that they needed. Uh, they'll just need to destroy Solemnity here, and we die. Let's just watch and make them uh, actually click the right button here. If they, for some reason, take an extra turn here... Okay, good. They didn't They didn't make the mistake, because if they had uh, decided to play with their food a little bit and get one trigger in, um, I could have Leyline Binding the Anissa, and then we would have been fine. Um, good game to opponent here. They absolutely <laughs> went ham with this portent tracker. Uh, pretty cool twiddle effect on Stomping Ground. Um, it would be pretty interesting to see uh, one of these uh, portent tracker type deals um, work in combination with Lotus Field and uh, any of the white untappers like Strict Proctor. Anyway, a uh, good round one. Uh, top of round two. Here we go. All right, here we go. Next round. Um, we have Utopia Sprawl to get going early. Up the Beanstalk is going to be nice with these Leyline Bindings. I keep. If I shock here, yeah, I think I'm going to probably just go for colors here. We need blue, black, red. Um, so I think we'll probably just decide between Zeatora and Savai Triome. How are we on green mana? Pretty decent right now, so I think I take Savai Triome. Make sure that we have white. More white, that is. Alright, so these Leyline Bindings will just cost two, and now this is pretty decent, so we can go Utopia Sprawl. This does produce green. No, it does not. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we can't Utopia Sprawl right now. I guess we'll just go for the Up the Beanstalk early. We get to redraw here. No land. Now, if we can just get a land drop here, that's unfortunate. So I think I'd probably just go up the Beanstalk here again, try to get a redraw. We'll see if opponent counters this. All right, and another Utopia Sprawl. How unfortunate. So I kind of wish I had taken that second green, or the second green mana source, because then I'd have a forest to uh, use my Utopia Sprawls on. Doesn't matter, we'll find him here. <clears throat> I want to make sure that my next card is a forest. 
And we probably want to get um, <clears throat> our other colors. So we need what, blue? Is that the one color that I'm missing? Uh, I do believe it is blue. Now, do I want to shock a hollow fountain is the question. Probably not. Be nice to have a breeding pool here. I actually took them out prior to recording the deck tech because I was uh, under the impression that we were very uh, green, white heavy, and I would often want temple gardens. Perhaps uh, one breeding pool, the same way that I have one hollowed fountain, is a, a change that I'd like to make. So do I want to drop the Sparse Headquarters then? I think I'll do that and then just hold. <clears throat> so now we have Leyline Binding held up, but we can also Utopia Strawl, probably on the not tri land just in case they have removal. And what color do we want to make? We have access to two white. <clears throat> That's good. I think for that reason, then we just go green. Yeah, just make a bunch of green, man. That seems like the move. <clears throat> All right, looks like they'll just pass back. Totally fine with me. We can Utopia Sprawl again here. When it does need to discard, this is Lightning Helix. So we're kind of a... Oh, they're Jeskai. Oh, hello. So this is Jeskai Control. All right, good to know. So then we'll just kind of set up our mana here, I think. Let's make this uh, uh, the Spara's headquarters able to produce... Mm, I guess more green then. We'll produce another white here. It's not really going to be used. Uh, so yeah, we make a lot of green here. We can Shark Typhoon if we want, but I think I just want to go for casting uh, a straight up Shark Typhoon at some point. We have five out of six mana to do so. One land will do it, especially if opponent taps out here. It'll be a Teferi Time Reveler. Um, that's fine. We can always cycle the Shark Typhoon, especially if they bounce something. Minusing that the beanstalk's pretty bad for them, honestly. Oh, nice. Well, we will go ahead and get our size one fairy. <clears throat> so now we're up the beanstalk's essentially a uh, secondary draw. Like, we get another draw out of it, which is sweet. Let's see if opponent drew a land. It appears they did not. Okay, so. Lush Portico means that I cannot uh, cast my Shark Typhoon this turn. We do want to Sithis. Uh, we go in, take out their Teferi, and we're so close to casting a Shark Typhoon. We'll just go up the Beanstalk here, uh, play things relatively chill. Um, I'll decide if I want to Idyllic Tutor yet. I don't think I want to at this moment. Uh, we'll just play the Sithis. Alright, and here we go. We are all set up here. Um... A Leyline Binding, even cast on, like, not to take out any one of their permanents, uh, does draw three cards, which is cool. So we're definitely casting it. They play what I have to assume is a Doom Scar here. Um, totally fine. I think we go Windswept Heath here, and then do we attempt to jam the Shark Typhoon? So they look like they are trying to hold some mana up. I think it would be kind of tough to overextend. We'll attack in and see if they do anything. Debating just trying to get this Shark Typhoon down. If you go to 16, Shark Typhoon would require a response from them. Let's give it a try. We do redraw twice. Three times, actually, that is. So it's not like we're really losing much here. I think they do have the counter spell for it. Oh, that, that one hurts, actually. Okay, fine. They're going to have a lot of mana to work with. All right, we get a Temple Garden, another land, and a Mystic Sanctuary. Sure. All right, so bummer how that one went. Uh, we'll probably just take a Surveil here. Um, yeah, my Leyline Bindings already have all colors. Let's get that blue-green we were talking about earlier. And uh, Teferi seems good. We have to discard a card here. I think we go for one of the Temple Gardens. We're good on that color of mana. All right, lot of mana drain mana here. Let's see what they make. Big decisions. They're gonna definitely be able to cast multiple spells.
And uh, it's going to be an Alrin's Epiphany. How interesting. Um, I actually was not looking at the screen when this was cast. I th assume it was not from the uh, Fortel zone. So we do need to be careful about our opponent's board state. They can combo kill, it seems. Uh, they can take turns and kill us, that is. Brawl Storm Conduit. Oh, now this is an interesting build. Uh, what are we going to be doing here? We're going to copy something. What will it be? Nothing. Okay, so that was just a plus. Or that was... I, they minus for nothing. I don't get it. Um, anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm really not sure what was going on there, but uh, we have round two in the bag. Off the back of up the beanstalk really doing its thing we are, uh, have already been able to see the combo of or not really combo but the synergy between sithis and up the beanstalk both being card advantage engines in their own right really nice that um even though we got mana drained on that second shark typhoon we uh, ended up with eight cards in hand uh after the fact so really setting ourselves up to not be unhappy when the opponent has counter spells ready for us Cool, so that was round two. Let's go into round three and see if we can't get around to resolving a Shark Typhoon. That'd be a pretty cool thing to do. All right, here we go for the next round. We have an Up the Mean Suck, we have some lands, and we have an Oko eventually, which is gonna be very strong. Opponent is on an aggressive game plan. If I play this now in Utopia Sprawl, we'll be set up to dropping up the Beanstalk next turn. The Hedge Maze after the fact means that uh, we'll have to wait a turn, but we can eventually get 9 lives down if I uh, choose white here. I think I will try choosing white. Still allows us to cast the Beanstalk. Hedge Maze will come down. might spectacle here no fury blade vampire how much damage does this guy do a lot potentially um well we'll go here i'd like another land which we do find so we'll do that play up the beanstalk um we have the potential to get leyline bindings out now we have the potential to oko as well which is great i feel like we're in a good spot it kind of depends on how active Activated this Fury Blade Vampire gets this turn. We are going to get hit for five. So that is nothing to sneeze at. Alright. We are at 11. Flame of Kel. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, this is as good a time as any to uh, Leyline Binding then. So we'll go get our other colors here. Get our red, uh, red, black. This leyline binding is super cheap now, so we go leyline binding. Make sure that they are not drawing any cards. We'll take the flame of Kel. So they'll have to get rid of their only um, card. I think that uh, I want to avoid them being able to hit me for another five, so we'll get rid of the fury blade right now. Uh, now we're feeling pretty solid. We'll have a Sithis next turn. Oh, another Flame of Keld here. Now I'm kind of sad I don't have that other Leyline Binding. Alright, so they're going to get to draw this next turn. Unless I can do something about this. Um, looks like that's really not going to be the case, honestly. Uh, we'll just Oko here. Oko can make food. And then, uh, yeah, we just have to avoid them getting a lot of uh, sources of damage. And we also get to Sithis here, because I did my math wrong. Um, next turn, if we draw land, we get Hardcast Shark Typhoon, and we'll be off to the races. This food's going to keep us alive, so I'm happy about that. And I'm feeling great. Things are good. Oko's going to be a huge problem. Our life total should be relatively safe. Alright, we do find that land, so let's go ahead and try it out. Um, I can minus Oko here. I'm just going to probably make more foods. Um... Let's sack here. And we'll probably go... I gotta think about this Flame of Keld here. Next turn, we potentially could get very hurt. Uh, I think what I'll actually do is just get a tap land, and we'll do this next turn. Um, I want to avoid dying accidentally. So we'll just let things happen for a turn. 
because it's pretty likely that uh, they have some sort of burn in their deck. So you know, if we just get shocked twice, then it feels kind of bad. Uh, we're happy to just eat this damage here. I could make a 2-2 two -two shark, but we want to just start casting shark typhoons straight up. It's totally fine. Uh, I'm just going to eat some foods right now. Oh, hello. All right, so that thing's going to be pretty darn big. Uh, I can make it slightly smaller with Oko next turn. Uh, I think I will just make the three life here, move to my turn, and then we'll plus, or we'll, uh, plus one Oko to make this into a creature that can block. Uh, we will hard cast the Shark Typhoon, and this is great. Sanctum Weaver also really good. Uro also really good. I feel like we're in a great spot. Back up to 11 life. And opponent says that we have the game. Uh, Hardcast Shark Typhoon is very, very hard to come back from. And I'm glad that we were able to finally get one on the battlefield. Um, yeah, so I mean, what to say other than we were able to survive Mono Red? Feels pretty good. Um, definitely being able to kill the Fury Blade Vampire was good. I'm not necessarily sure I wanted to... Uh, wanted to kill that one for sure. Because they did have the second Flame of Keld. If I had known about that... I don't know if I would have... I think I still would have done this the way that I did because Flame of Keld does represent cards, but this represented pretty much 5 damage a turn, uh, this little guy, this 4-2. Uh, four, four anyway, uh, great round. Let's hop into the next. Here we go. All right, this is what round? Round 4? I think that sounds right. Uh, pretty good hand, a lot of cheap spells, a lot of Sithises that can draw us cards, and their uh, Up the Beanstalk counterparts. I am in. So we need to find white mana. We can get the Marty Triome here that gives me red black, so that Leyland Binding should be pretty cheap. And all we need to do is find a blue mana source at some point. Dark Rit and Necropotence most likely. No, Preacher of the Schisms. What does this guy do? Uh, it's about to not matter because we are going to uh, do this, do that, and there goes their early advantage. Heck yeah. Everyone's cheating things into play. Let's get it. Another Dark Rit. They're going again. <laughs> it's another Preacher of the Schism. They really want this card to land. Um, unfortunately can't do anything about that this time. We'll go Sanctum Weaver here, then go Sithis Beanstalk. Or, yeah, yeah, Sithis then Beanstalk is correct. Hopefully finding another Leyline Binding. Bloodgast, annoying. We'll take our two. No blocks. We will try to heal from it. And do they have another play? Thoughtseize. Oh, well, they'll probably just take the Beanstalk here then. Seeing as we have triple Sithis. This should be honestly a snap decision here. Uh, it's very obviously to take up the Beanstalk. There you go. Here's Sithis. And we have a Shark Typhoon castable next turn. Nice. I can redraw with our Sithises. I have a total of four mana to work with. Two of it will be green after the fact. I don't think it's worth uh, doing this. I don't think the card is worth it right now. Opponent isn't showing me certain death yet. Uh, the Preacher of the Schism is a little scary, but it's fine. Uh, we definitely just take four here. Sithis will be able to keep us a little bit healthy. Uh, and if we can just land the Shark Typhoon, we are smooth sailing. Will there be anything else this turn? They have four mana. Another Blood Ghast, all right. Okay, so one would have me believe that this is hard cast Shark Typhoon. Heck yeah. We go to 14, get another Beanstalk, no attacks, and uh, this is great. So we have a lot of mana to work with that can translate into a lot of Shark Typhoon. I might even cast another Sithis, we'll see. 
Uh, they're going to attack in here. I think we kind of just eat this damage here. Get kind of close to death. But uh, we'll gain some of it back with Sithis next turn. This is not the end of the world. I could have blocked with Sithis uh, and taken out the 1-1. One, one. I want to avoid like a Bowmaster kind of deal. Alright, Blood Gusts now have Haste. Hopefully not for too long. Another Blood Gust comes down. That's fine. Alright. Double Beanstalk. Okay, so we have a total of 6 mana, so this should work out. I think I make Beanstalk mana first. This is the way that I want to do it. I think this is right. Yeah, because I'll make a bunch of green with the Sanctum Weaver. Alright. Make Shark Typhoon. There's a land, which is great. We do get to draw. We get to go for another Beanstalk here. We're going to be making green. And I want to save this one, Swept Teeth, if I need another white. Uh, or a blue, like uh, my options are now. So we go Leyline Binding, I believe. We're back to 10. Blood Gas almost turn off. Another Shark Typhoon is huge. Leyline Binding, take the Preacher. Stop them from going wide. Um, and then with our last mana, if we Shock for blue, we can do Oko. And then now we have... Uh, a very reliable way of making life. Also, we get a 3-3 three, three shark. All right, well, this is uh, the combo here. We're doing everything that this deck ever wanted to do. We have food, we have creatures, we have enchantments. Uh, everything is pulling together here. And if all goes south, we have Idyllic Tutor for uh, a locked piece. Things are looking great. Oh, Kalidus, all right. How interesting. Uh, we're going to lose our creatures at some point, uh, but for the most part, this guy's not a big problem. Uh, we can also just Oko him. Uh, so now we're very interested in blocking. Uh, big block, tiny block, trade and trade. Uh, they can bring all these back, but I'm just interested in preserving my own life total for now. Uh, sure. <laughs> Dark Rit, what are we doing? Oh, they just want to sack these creatures to put some counters on this guy? Sure. Okay, so it's a 5-6 now. That's not the end of the world. Um, I can just block with any of my creatures and be okay. Um, so we'll go Windswept Heath, I'm thinking. Um, we can show them second Shark Typhoon, I guess. How much mana does this make? This makes seven. Uh, I can also just, I believe, Idyllic Tutor and lock them out, right? Um, let's make a bunch of green. Idyllic Tutor. Oh, my colors are not totally right here. Um, we can get nine lives. We can cast nine lives, and then, uh, yeah, I have five out of six mana. So I needed to wait until the Sanctum Weaver uh, grew one bigger. Oh, wait, no, no, no. This is uh, this is silly, because I have uh, a land drop for this turn. Yeah, yeah, so we're fine. Leyline Binding as well. Uh, let's make a food token. Let's uh, do this. Go get a land. Opponent sees what's good. Uh, we have them about dead. And then we could also have Leyline Binding this guy and been totally fine. Sweet. Very good round there. We finally showed the absolute strength that this deck can put forward when all things go right. Hopefully round five we'll have a little bit more of that here as uh, we hop in there. So I'll see you in round five. All right, it's the final round. Let's hope for a good one. We have early Sithis, early Utopia Sprawl at that even as well, which is nice. Uh, if I Utopia Sprawl for white, that's pretty good. This also does set up nine lives. Windswept Heath would have to get Spara's Headquarters, which means that this Leyline Binding is a little bit more expensive. Um, I do kind of want to produce blue. Um, I think I will keep the sand. We'll see what the draw looks like, but I think it's going to be Temple Garden, Shock, put Utopia Sprawl on it, get ready for Sithis the following turn. Maybe the Sanctum Weaver changes that. I'm not really sure. Pay 2 life. Here we go. We're going to make sure that we ramp out. 
Uh, and then I said white here. I guess it actually could have just been green. Maybe it should have been green, actually. I'm not sure that I like the white option there, because Windswept Heath likely will end up making white, or the Sanctum Weaver. We even draw the Hollowed Fountain anyway, so now that uh, we did that, this Windswept Heath can be anything. And we know that we'll have the blue eventually, so we just get our red black. Play Sithis. When it's on their life gain, if they want to do that, that's fine. Celestial Unicorn, alright. They are starting to get large. Uh, Leyline Binding is here to save the day, eventually. Uh, we drop this in, and do I need to shock it? I already have three mana available, and we do have the white left over, so I put this in tapped. We go Sanctum Weaver here, holding up Leyline Binding. Great. And here is Oko ready to take out the Soul Warden next turn. I think I'm probably just killing the Celestial Unicorn. Uh, no attacks here. And turn, we'll stop at their combat. Hopefully they spend some resources trying to make the Unicorn big as possible. Come ball. Whenever one of our tokens enters the battlefield, uh, that's going to be bad for uh, Oko. They get to copy my food tokens, and then they drain me when they make their tokens. Okay, fine. We'll just have to uh, avoid making tokens for the time being. I can uh, probably Oko Elk the Kumball. All right, so I think we go Leyline Binding here, take out the Celestial Unicorn, resolve. I have a lot of mana here. We actually might be, yeah, I think we can just Shark Typhoon. Uh, so that's actually even better. We're gonna go Shark Typhoon into Shark Typhoon, and it's gonna be great. All right, move to my turn here. Idyllic Tutor here in case we want to lock them out. I think we just go right here for Shark Typhoon. All right, and then uh, I actually didn't do my math correctly because somehow we still have enough mana to Uro. Let's take a Surveil here. Ah, uh, no, I'm going to grab a Sparrow's Headquarters. Um, oh, kind of misread there. Uh, I was supposed to get an untapped plan for Uro. Unfortunately, we will end up passing. It's fine. We have a lot of mana. Things are okay. So one, two, three, four mana from the Sanctum Weaver, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is Shark Typhoon plus Uro Oko. Invasion of Theros. What do they find from here? Heliod Suncrowned, okay. So they do want to do some stuff with him. Totally fine for them to attack here. It's all good. Um, and so now I think we go ahead and do Uro, or sorry, not Uro, Oko plus. Uh, we're going to start with Shark Typhoon here for uh, just make a 6-6. Six, six. And I think from this point, we are looking very solid, except for the fact where Kumball makes uh, a 6-6. Six, six. Kind of forgot about that being a thing. Uh, it is what it is. We'll go Oko here. Um, at least we make another 6-6 six, six worth of uh, stuff. And luckily, Kumball triggers only once a turn as well. Uh, we are going to turn that guy off, because he is going to be a problem if we're left unchecked. Alright, so they have a 6-6. Six, six. It is what it is. Could be worse. Uh, so anyway, now we just kind of work towards locking them out, and uh, the game should be as good as one. Okay, what, are you, what is your deal? When he attacks, we discard. When it dies, return it tapped. Well, how about we make that thing into a 3-3? Three, three? Shouldn't be any attacks here. Um, we can easily block everything they got going on. Life's looking good. I think this is one of those positions that we absolutely do not uh, lose from. So they decide to go in here. Uh, we are happy to make this trade. Move to my turn here. We have a surveil in. Let's see what's on the top. Uh, up the beanstalk is nice. We do want that. Um, Oko will plus kill this guy. Or not kill him, but you know what I mean. Um, and then, do we want to go nine lives here? Or we'll just kind of uh, use our life total as a resource currently. Trick or trigger. They gain some life. It's fine. Uro comes back. Uh, next turn, I think. Then we'll go up the beanstalk now. Got some more things to block with. 
Another up the beanstalk is here. Perfect. Um, and then do I want a nine lies idyllic tutor? Uh, idyllic tutor can find removal for Heliod after he comes down. So I think we'll just go ahead and do all this uh, green mana stuff right now. So it'll be up the beanstalk again. Got to do this all in one turn. In case I have another come ball in hand. Uh, draw another card, Windswept Heath, and then here's a Sanctum Weaver. We have a lot of mana now. Uh, cool, another Utopia Sprawl, because why not? Let's put that guy on the Sparrow's Headquarters. We'll make a 1-1 Shark, times 2. This is absolute value. I feel so rich. Another Utopia Sprawl. We are just absolutely chaining here. Uh, 30 cards left in deck. We're doing fine here. Another Sith is here, and we are finally not able to continue. Move to combat here. Swing in for 6. And we'll begin the long stretch towards victory. There goes Heliod. Heliod's not a creature yet, thankfully. Soul Warden's only going to get a few triggers before we kill Heliod. If they were to play another creature here, Heliod becomes uh, big and we can just Oko him. Or he becomes a creature and we can Oko him. Dig through time's not really even necessary at this point unless I want to do an 8 mana uh, Shark Typhoon times 2. That could be kind of fun. There goes Heliod. Sure. Should have done that before so that Heliod came in as a creature. But to each their own. Um, I think I'm probably going to just dig through time here. Um, let's go make a bunch of blue. Uh, trigger Shark Typhoon for two eight eight Sharks. Pretty sweet. Uh, they can do that fine. Probably should have okoed beforehand, but at this point I don't think we're really in a losing situation. Might as well make Heliod big, I guess. Alright, cool. And uh, same sort of thing happens again. Sure, go for it. Uh, I should probably get on that Solemnity plan real quick. Uh, at this point, I don't really even think that it's a <laughs> it's a bother. Uh, we'll grab Teferi, we'll grab Solemnity. Now we're solid. Uh, here's a Solemnity. Yep. There's more stuff. Let's go. All right, opponents had enough. Uh, this would have been probably like a one or two more uh, attack steps in order for us to kill. But I think the evidence was overwhelming. We absolutely had them. You know you're doing well when the token size gets really small and you can't really read the numbers anymore. But that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was a super fun one to record, and I'm glad that we ended on a high note. Um, a very, very cool deck here. Kudos to Bosch and Roll and his community for uh, all the work that they put into for their decks. Uh, they really do play some interesting things there. Um, and so if you're interested in Legacy at all, um, or any of those uh, older Eternal formats, would recommend checking out him. And uh, it's really nice to be able to uh, adapt a lot of these cool things to Timeless, uh, since that has been such... This format has just been so, so very good ever since it was uh, added to Arena. So with that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure to like and comment to help with the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe if you're new for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's all that I got for you guys, so uh, make sure to check the deck list out in the video description, and I will see you in the next one.